Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret, and today we're in the book of 1 Samuel. We're going verse by verse through 1 Samuel. We come to 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 24 today. While you're getting your Bible, I'll remind you that the Scripture Verse by Verse website can be found at thebibleversebyverse.com. There you can study with me, just like today, using my audio Bible messages. There you will find four complete series going through the entire Bible, verse by verse. Study them at your pace, at your convenience. Choose the series going back over 35 years. Then choose the book of the Bible, the chapter, the section. Click and listen. You're all set. All you need to bring is your Bible. And Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. You know, it was like my dad used to say, it was like pulling teeth. But Saul at last admits his sin. Some people, some people just will not ever confess their sins. They are so puffed up with pride. They don't confess their sins. They don't apologize to the one that they have offended. And that is deadly. When you're talking about a marriage or any kind of a relationship, it's destined for the dung pile, if that's the way it is with one person out of the two or both of them. <clears throat> it's terrible. That's how Saul was. But he, at least he finally confessed. Of course, he was caught with the smoking gun, as it were. But still, some people, some people, they're caught with the, with blood on their hands, guilty as can be, and everybody knows it, including them, and they still won't confess. They'll just clam up and not say anything at all. That's when you know it's totally hopeless. This confession had to be forced out of Saul. You're going to lose your kingdom, Saul. Okay, I'm guilty then. There's no change of heart in this man. Confessing because you've been caught doesn't automatically mean that there is repentance and forgiveness. There was no repentance. That will become crystal clear. And there was no forgiveness. 25. Now therefore I pray thee, pardon my sin and turn again with me that I may worship the Lord. Well, Saul is talking to Samuel, God's prophet and the priest. Saul is talking to the wrong person. He needs to be asking God for forgiveness, not Samuel. He's asking Samuel to pardon his sin. Samuel can't pardon his sin. Only God can forgive sins, the Bible says. He needs to be asking God for forgiveness. And it is true that some sins are against people and there should be an apology. But all sins are offenses against God and need to be confessed to Him. Other people can forgive you for you sinning against them, but only God can judicially wipe your slate clean. <clears throat> 26. And yet, and Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord hath rejected thee from being king over Israel. Notice, you have rejected God. You have rejected God, Saul. In other words, no excuses. You sinned because you chose to do it. Sin is willful rejection, 
not just God's command. It is willful rejection of God. 27. And as Samuel turned about to go away, he laid hold upon the skirt of his mantle, and it tore. Saul grabbed Samuel because he knew that he could not afford to lose him. If Saul loses the support of Samuel, the highly respected priest and prophet in Israel, he knows he'll lose the support of the people as well. Saul's not the least bit concerned about how he offended God. He's just concerned about himself. He's just concerned about his own reputation. <clears throat> 28. And Samuel said unto him, The Lord hath torn the kingdom of Israel from thee this day, and hath given it to a neighbor of thine who is better than thou. <clears throat> what an insult. Saul is going to have the kingdom torn away from him and given to someone better, says God. You treat God with contempt, and God will treat you with contempt too. I would hate to have God say to me, Mike, I had an assignment for you, but because of your moral failure, I'm going to give it to someone who deserves it more, or who not, not so much deserves it more, but who loves me more. That would be a shameful thing to experience. 29. And also the strength of Israel will not lie nor repent, for he is not a man that he should repent. The strength of Israel refers to Almighty God himself. Sometimes, sometimes people do not do what they say they will do. Sometimes it is because they are fickle. Sometimes it is because they are tired or sick. And sometimes the unexpected happens and they can't do what they said they, they would do. Well, none of those things apply to God. He makes promise, and then he makes sure that everything in heaven and on earth works together to make it happen. 30. Then he said, I have sinned, yet honor me now, I pray thee, before the elders of my people and before Israel, and turn again with me, that I may worship the Lord thy God. This man was backed into a corner and he was forced to admit that he sinned. But he's not sorry and he hasn't repented. He was just backed into a corner. He didn't have any choice. Repenting sinners do not ask for honor. That's the last thing on their mind. What's the first thing that Paul or Saul says? Honor me. What? You've just been told that God is going to take your kingdom away and give it to somebody who loves him more. And all you can think of after your grievous sin, it's in your face. And all you can think about is give me honor. Those are not the words of a penitent sinner. Verse 31. So Samuel turned again after Saul. And Saul worshipped the Lord. Sure he did. I don't know why Samuel went along with Saul to make everything look good. Don't know why. Maybe he was trying to keep stability in the kingdom. You know. Until God's permanent king David would uh, take over. But uh, he had no business in propping up that self-centered penitent sinner, impenitent sinner. You cater to sinners who will not repent. All you do is make it worse. Make them worse. 32. Then said Samuel, 
Bring ye here to me Agag, the king of the Amalekites. And Agag came unto him cheerfully. And Agag said, Surely the bitterness of death is past. Smart Alec, smart, smart Alec, I'm sorry. King Agag thought that he got away with his evil. Remember, the Amalekites, they were just horrible people. Cruel to the most innocent, to women, children, disabled. They'd go after them first because they were easy prey. They were just viciously cruel. And that's why God wanted them completely wiped out. And the king was the worst of the worst, I guess. And his whole country was wiped out, except for the king. And he thought he got away with his evil. Cocky grin on his face, no doubt. As he is called for by Samuel. Some people don't care about the evil that they have done. They just want to get away with the evil that they have done. Agag thought that he got away with it. Well, look at 33. And Samuel said, he's talking to Agag, As thy sword hath made women childless, so shall thy mother be childless among women. And Samuel hewed Agag in pieces before the Lord in Gilgal, chopped him up like hamburger. Sooner or later, a sinner will harvest what they plant. You know, you plant tomatoes, you're going to pick tomatoes. You plant hurt in the lives of others, and God will see that you are hurting someday. No one beats the system. Agag reaped what he, was so what he had sowed for a long, long time. He was hacked to pieces. 34. Then Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house to Gabeah of Saul. And Samuel came no more to see Saul until the day of his death. And why would Samuel go to see him? Saul never did listen to Samuel's commands, so now Samuel shuns him and doesn't even attempt to advise him anymore. You know, eventually, if a person does not repent, God quits striving with them altogether and just gives them what they want. It's all a part of his judgment. 35. And Samuel came no more to see Saul until the day of his death. Nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul, and the Lord repented that he had made Saul king over Israel. Saul was a wicked man, and yet Samuel still mourned over God's judgment of Saul. God doesn't like to punish sinners, and God's people should not like to see it happen either. Samuel was sad, but he didn't let his sadness allow him to coddle Saul. He never let sadness over the punishment of sinners to stop him from being holy. And you and I should never let sadness over the punish of sin, punishment of sinners cause, cause us to coddle them, to feel sorry for them, and say, well, it's okay, it's no big deal. It's not okay, it is a big deal. And God tells us when someone sins against him, and it's our duty to punish them. We have that authority. Our eye must not pity them. Study the whole Bible with me at thebibleversebyverse.com, Genesis through Revelation, using my audio Bible messages. And if you want to be a part of this ministry, you can be by praying for me and God's Word. And also, when you take a break from studying at thebibleversebyverse.com, click the Donate button at the top of the front page and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. Until next time, Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. So long, everyone.